Hello, my name's Steam from Kscale Models, and today I'm doing a video about something that I've had an idea for for some time, uh, many years in fact, but I've just never got round to doing because it is so much work and would require so much input that I, I just couldn't do it. Recently, I had a conversation with someone on the 3D Printing Facebook page, uh, 3D Printing Gunpla Facebook page, and they were coming to the same sort of idea, but nothing's happened at their end for over a month. And I think it will take a lot of time and effort to make. So I'm going to have a go at making the back end for this idea and getting it out there. So what is this idea? Well, it's to make a database where you can find all the information you need to make something for a particular model kit in Gunpla. So what is that sort of information? Well, I'm going to use this Wingdom's hand as an example. So this is a very basic version of the Wingdom's hand. If you've got the kit in front of you, the 144 scale kit, you can look at it and go, okay, that's very basic compared to what the actual kit looks like. But it needs to be basic because or it doesn't have to be complicated, it just needs to be basic for what you need to know to make a weapon that fits in the hand. You need to know that you've got there to there, you need to know that there's this little bit here that sticks out so that rifles normally fit in this side, a beam saber would fit in that because it squares it off better. And you need to know how far it is between here and here because that tells you where you would have like a trigger guard or something. So yeah, very basic shape, but the required information. So that doesn't sound too complicated. Well, the problem is what we call in the industry the drawing management system. So a drawing management system is a big part of an engineer or draftsman's work. It's basically making sure they've got all the relevant documentation for any drawings that are doing and that someone isn't using the exact same title because you need to go back to these things in years gone by if say something breaks or you've got the thing and the customer comes back and says hey I want another one of those so you need to have a way of identifying it and then um, being able to modify it or whatever so drawing management system so let's go to the most basic version of a drawing management system it is an Excel spreadsheet, or in this case, just a regular uh, Google Sheet that I've made up in um, my Google Drive. And it gives us a couple of bits of information. So, first is a drawing number. You do not pick your drawing number. You're assigned a drawing number. This is so that people don't just pick random numbers down here. The only time a draftsman would ever decide to go and skip some between jobs is if say for example someone knew I was working on a drawing that or a series of drawings that needed six drawings they would possibly take out 07 however if I hadn't reserved these like put my name to them then they would be free to take them and yeah that it gets messy when people try to do that and I've seen it go wrong so yeah we're not going to have a case that you can reserve your own number you are picking the next number in the list the next bit, username. This is to give you credit, because if you are working on this and contributing to it, I think you deserve some credit. So you're allowed to put your username in, and there will be a description in a readme file on how you link that to, like, say, your Thingiverse profile, your Facebook page, something where people can go and find your models that you create and give you the credit. The next one, the kit this is for. So in this case, this is the 1 over 1, oh, one over 144 scale Wingdom high grade. I've got the series in here, but to be honest, I'm not too sure if I want to keep that. The reason I put it in there is that I've been finding that some kits share the same parts. However, a Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny are 
poor choice in this. The reason is that whilst, yes, later hands in the like Gundam Seed, no, Seed Destiny and some of the Gundam Seed lines are identical, the Wingdom's hand's actually the same one they use in the Leo, or at least close enough to make no difference. So, yeah, it doesn't really work too well with the series, and if you go far enough back, you get into the older high grades in the series, and those have a completely different hand, so this isn't too relevant. I'm going to keep it in there for now, just for additional information. Data manufacture. This, to me, is going to be more important than the series. Because, as I said before, there is cases where kits are being manufactured with very similar, if not identical, hands. So, it might be a case that we find out eventually that a whole bunch of hands, up until a certain date, were identical. At which point, we will call this Type A hand, or something like that. We've then got the upload date. So, this is kind of an important documentation thing with uh, regards to... Um, like drawing management systems. The date you've uploaded a document and the rev or revision number it is. So why is this important? Well in industry if you send a uh, like drawing to the customer or mailify the drawing after the customer seen it you have to then inform them that there has been a change to that drawing. It might be a minor change. You might have got a spelling mistake in there. It happens. I'm dyslexic. Like I've done that enough times. Then you've got to um, like say what date you did this and send it off for approval. So another part of this could be say you're sending this drawing to the shop floor. In engineering, if you've got a drawing that's on the shop floor and then it basically gets up revved, you have to call back all those drawings that are on the shop floor and issue the new ones. If not, you can find that the guys on the shop floor make the wrong thing. It happens, things change. For instance, the customer comes back and says, can you move that bit over two millimeters because it conflicts with something on our end. That's fair enough, we'll move it over, but we need to make sure the guys in the shop floor know. So in our case, this is gonna be more just keeping the documentation sensible and if there has to have been a change, let people know that, yeah, you're now working with the older version, go get the newer version. So, I'm going to run through an example for this. So, let me just go to my drive. So, drive. So, and this is just kind of behind the scenes with the Patreon stuff as well. So, this was the file that we were just in. We've got two, oh, two document folders here. One is archive, one is DMS. So archive is for the old drawings. DMS is the drawing management system. So I'm just clicking here. And you can see I've got a couple of drawings, all Rev A, because that's what I'm currently working with, Rev A's. Problem is that these are actually wrong and not actually the current builds. And in fact, I've not kind of shown you everything yet. So I'm going to just finish off the drawing management system, then I'll get to that. So go back here. So what I would do is I would take these two, I would, in this case, I've um, cut them, actually, better off just doing move to, and saying move to the archive system, new folder, 00001A. That's the new folder. Move here. What that does is that gets these out of the live folder where people will find them and into the archive. So if I go here, it's Rev A. Now, to be honest, the better way of doing that would have been just to uh, move the whole file because you can actually do that. You can just go in here, go move file, and then just move it to wherever it was, the archive, and then just create a new one in its place. Instead, I'm just going to rename this going to rename it B and then I'm going to upload several files to go in there. So there is three files that should really be uploaded with these. So, oh no, I picked the wrong one. Uh, have I? No, I haven't. So, okay, so three files. Now these might change before you see them, but I'm just using this as an example. So the first is a file that was created from Fusion 360. So this is, if you open that up in Fusion 360, you will get the exact same model 
and all the abilities to edit things. This is important because someone in Fusion might decide that they want to put this in their model and they might want to use it as like a template to say, okay, this fits. So being able to import it in the native file is very important. It makes things so much easier. However, there is such a thing called universal CAD files or um, that stuff like your STL, your step file, stuff like that. That's a universal file format that can be imported into all CAD programs. However, because it's not native to the system, it will sometimes have errors. If you, for instance, import an STL into Fusion 360, it sometimes gets the units wrong. Well, it always gets the units wrong. It will pull that through as either feet and inches or as meters instead of millimeters. So I will just quickly go and give you an example. This is the exact same model that was here. So if I go to here and say import, no, no, cancel. Uh, insert into current drawing. Yeah. That is massive. So something's gone wrong with the scaling there. And that could throw someone's model off. So where at all possible, have the native file as well. So I'll just get rid of that. Now, next one that I'm looking for is a PDF. So a PDF in this case is or like an actual scale drawing of the particular model. So this is what I'm going for here. Now, this one's actually incorrect. You can see here it says Rev A. It is not Rev A, it's Rev B. So I will actually have to go in and change that. So this is the actual engineering scale model drawing. Now, because we will be working with people that are not familiar with like engineering drawings, CAD, that sort of thing, there is some things that I'm going to ask for. So, first off, if you're wanting to contribute to this and you do not use CAD software, that's fine. You can upload a PDF with the relevant information. You may need to draw it out by hand or in paint. A rough sketch will be better than nothing, so please do so. But when we're doing this, we are going to have to put in more information than we would normally do in an engineering drawing, such as we're seeing in this case, left hand, right side so we're saying which side we're looking at so we're looking at this from the right and this is the left hand this is that direction is forward and then we've got the two views so this is from the top and this is from the side so you can see here i've got top next to these this is the right hand side and i've spelled that wrong so hold on so that's going to have to get up right so just down here quickly so yeah and um, now with this we will need all the information that we can get to make this hand so what we've got here is the inside sizes of the hand so we've got the total and breakdown of where that is we've also got the like what each side will be we've got how wide it is to the front so the distance between the inside and the knuckle we've got the height we've got the size of those little uh, grooves in there how big those are so yeah um this is not perfect there's things in this that i'm looking at going i'm not too sure about the way this is laid out that's fine for the moment if you're doing this all i'm asking for is try to make this as clear as possible and give as much information as possible it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not paying you to do this. But yeah, um, try to make it as clear as possible for someone to come in and get the relevant information. If you have to then go make a new sheet, a new drawing to go on top of this, that's fine. If you have to take more than one sheet to do this, do it. But this is the sort of basic information that I'm needing. So, um, let's get rid of this and i will now quickly save this so let's just do export all sheets and i'm going to x over this because right now no one has seen this so this would be like an internal uh catch so someone has came along and went oh steven you've got this drawing wrong can you go and redo it you've got a spelling mistake in there so yeah spelling mistakes right oh 
no, that's still wrong. Why is that wrong? So yeah. This sort of thing happens in engineering. You just have to deal with it. But yeah, as long as it's caught before it's been like downloaded or anything, yeah, I'll allow that to be able to change it. If you're just realize, oh, I've looked at it again and things have gone wrong, that's fine. So that's the idea that I've had to make this sort of database with information. It's gonna start out small scale at first and there is gonna be changes to this. I'll give you an idea of some of the things that I am thinking of changing. First off, this drawing numbering system. Right now, it is just a lot of numbers. However, for this sort of work, what might happen is I might do all drawings start at 01001 for hands, 02 for feet, 03 for chest connectors, or something like that. What this gives us is it gives us 99 different drawing numbers that can be taken out and a two digit code which gives us 99 different combinations to basically uh, be able to identify like what it is we're looking at. Now yes, in that case there will need to be some sort of key that says this is what this is for but it will help to keep things organised and will mean that we can have different drawing management systems for each different type and should hopefully clear things up because th the problem with this particular type of drawing management system is that it will only ever like be good at giving you a number it won't be able to tell you what this is you would need to then create another column that says this is 1 over 144 scale hands however I'm keeping this simple for the moment because this is a test I want to see if the community is interested in doing or interested in doing this where they like keep a record of like a drawing management system that's kept updated and if they would actually use this sort of information to make models with because if we're uploading a bunch of things and no one's actually downloading them kind of pointless so Thank you for watching. I hope you find this interesting and I hope you contribute to this file. Um, as I say, completely voluntary, but would be much appreciated. But for now, thank you for watching.